All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about how I created the backing tracks for this guitar profile. Uh, so let's have a listen to this file here first. Okay, so I used Band in the Box to generate a bass line and piano right here, pad synthesizer, and the drums. So how did I piece all this together? So that's what I'm going to talk about. So we pull up uh, Band in a Box. Uh, the first step is you want to choose a style or a groove that you think would fit with uh, you know your your piece and I chose this uh, Grover Washington style um, so the next step is you want to create a uh, a backing in band in the box that matches your number of measures and you know time signature beats per minute and so forth that you used in your original guitar profile. So <clears throat> let's do that. So I'm going to do File New to get rid of these uh, changes that were in there. And let's see, I know that my original file has 12 measures, basically. It's actually 14, but uh, it started out as 12, and Band in the Box actually. Uh, when you put 12 in, Band in the Box will automatically, by default, tag an extra two measures to that. So it's actually 14, even though it says 12 up here. Number of choruses, one. So it just goes around one time. Uh, 120 beats per minute. Of course, time signature, 4-4, four, four, and so forth. Now, so, uh, you know, see... 120 beats per minute and we've got basically 12 measures but like I said actually ban in the box made this happen right here where you have these two empty measures so I just put uh, these rests in here uh, it worked out uh, so you'll see what I'm talking about as we go along alright so the chord progression and I'll talk about the um, you know music theory part of this stuff later. This is just the technological part, if you will. So, um, getting back to Guitar Pro, excuse me, Band in the Box, we're going to input in this progression. It's actually a F Lydian progression. E minor over F to F. So we'll come back here to Band in the Box and we'll do that. E minor over F, enter, Go to measure two, F, enter. Whoops, E minor over F, enter, and F. Now, what I can do, enter, is just copy this. Right click, copy, and then come down here, paste, and paste. And let's see, I can get rid of that. Not really sure why uh, or what would happen if I left those markers there, um, but usually that's kind of how I do this. And with this particular fusion style, you have two different uh, variations. You got the A variation and the B, and I went with the B when I created this originally. So this is an F Lydian progression. So my last chord, I'm going to use F major... Uh, 9 sharp 11 enter that's what I have in the guitar pro file okay so once we have all this done right we've got one chorus meaning it's just gonna play through these this progression one time in other words from here 
down to here, end at 14, and it's done. Um, time signature is right, key, beats per minute. Uh, so the next thing is we want to generate uh, each track. So how do we do that? First of all, you know, if we were to just go over here to MIDI and have it, you know, generate a MIDI file right now, it would put all that MIDI information on one track. We don't want to do that. We've got to be able to single out each track. So how we do that is we come over here to the Mixer tab, and then, like for the bass, we want to make a bass track. So we select S for solo. We want to solo that track. Okay, then we come over here to the MIDI export song as MIDI file. Then we select that and then file on disk. Select this and then name it what you want. Make sure it's in the folder that you want and so forth. Like you could name it base and maybe already have a folder in a specified location you know that uh, is designated what you want. And so you're going to do that for every track you want to create. So if you want to create electric piano, you go here and you click on S to solo the electric piano. Click on MIDI, file on disk, and so forth. And just go through each one. Now, I just uh, created a MIDI file of bass, electric piano, drums, and warm pad. So once I've generated all that, uh, and, you know, those MIDI files are now saved in a folder then I come back over here. Now let's pretend these other tracks are not here. How we would add a track to our uh, original one track file if you will is you just simply come over here to the plus and you know click on this plus icon and it brings up this dialog box. So for bass we would select stringed and then select uh, you know bass here and then what kind of bass you want I chose electric and then you hit OK and then once you do that it generates a a bass track now uh, when you do this initially you're not going to have anything in the uh, in the system here uh, in, in the staves and in the tab it's going to be blank uh, and so you keep going with that you, you hit your plus and then now you want say a piano track and so you go to orchestra then you select keyboard and then electric piano and you hit OK that'll create your piano track and then for pad synth again you're gonna hit plus and you know you go to uh, synth this time you know orchestra synth and then pad and then you hit OK and then obviously when you go to do the drum track you just select drums and so forth. So now let's pretend here that we've got all these tracks but nothing in them. You know, they'll be like uh, systems, you know, the music staff and stuff, but nothing, uh, no notes in them. So how do we get the notes in them? Okay, so what you do is you go up here to File and then you go to Import MIDI. All right, and so let's say you want to import the bass. Now, this is not going to put the bass in the track you're working on. It's going to make a separate like project. Watch, open. Uh, let's see. We want. Uh, we don't want fretless bass. We want electric bass with the finger, and then hit OK, and then hit import. And you don't have to mess with any of these settings here. Just let it do uh, you know default stuff you hit import okay base see base is over here so then what you have to do is copy this I'm just left clicking and dragging if you have Windows if you have a Mac I don't know what you do probably something similar and then right click and you want to select copy then you come back over here to your original project here and then you go down to your base track select it it's already selected as you can see then you click in your first uh, uh, measure here um, either one up here or here I guess it doesn't matter and then you right click and then select paste and then it fills in all this musical notation as you see right here 
Okay, from there, uh, so let's say now you want to um, fill in your piano, right? And I'm going to exit out of these little things here. Okay, so here we have the original that we're working with, and that was that MIDI bass track. Okay, so we want piano now. So we go File, Import, MIDI, and then we select our piano MIDI track that we generated open. Make sure it looks right. All this stuff, just leave it as default. Select the Import. And as you see, it put the uh, piano MIDI track over here like its own project. Now, uh, you can't copy, at least I don't know how, that you would copy the treble clef and the bass clef at the same time. So, you, so as far as I know, you have to do it separately. So you select the treble clef, right? And then drag it down. Okay, that's got all the treble clef. And then you right click, select copy, then you come over here. And then you select your piano track, and then you come over here to treble clef, right click, and then paste. And that fills in your treble clef. Then you got to go back to your bass clef. Select all that. Okay, right click, copy. Then you come back over here to your bass clef of the piano. Click in there, right click, paste, and it fills all that in. Do the same exact procedure for the pad synthesizer. And for the drum kit, you know, it's pretty simple. You know, like I'll show you file, import, MIDI, and you'd select drums and leave everything as default, import, and you just simply highlight that. It's real easy. Copy. Then you come over here to your drum track, select your drum track over here, click into the first measure, first beat, then right click, select paste, and it fills it all in real nicely. Okay, so now you've got all your tracks done, okay? So now what about uh, sounds? Because, you know, let's say you do this and you're like, man, this doesn't sound quite as good as you know, Daryl's track that he made, you know. So uh, here's what you do. Um, here's what I did at least. So for electric bass, um, you can, like if you select electric bass over here and then come up here and you select uh, this inspector here that brings up this right panel right over here. And, you know, you can select, you know, clean bass and then go down here and select one of these presets or signature, whatever. You got basses right here, all this kind of stuff. But, you know, see how it says DG bass here? So what I did was like, I was thinking, you know, a while back whenever I did, you know, Fusion Solos or even the Visions and Dreams songbook, I spent the time and created like a, a good bass sound. So, uh, you should have access to that. Um, so you would just, uh, for example, go into File, and then Open. Let's see if Open Recent, if I've got Breath of Life in here, or I don't see it. Okay. Oh, there it is right there. Breath of Life. So, you know, you could uh, select uh, one of my you know, old tunes, right? And then you just come down here to electric bass. Okay, select that bass track. And then you come over here to the right panel and see where you got these uh, three little dots. You click on that, the sound options, and then save as user sound preset. So when you click on that, it will bring up a dialog box and then you can name it like DG Bass or whatever you want to name it. Then you can use that when you come back over here. And uh, you go back onto your bass track and then you select this uh, where you have the up and down arrow right here. Then you select Clean Bass and then you'll see it sitting in there, whatever you named it. I named mine DG Bass. 
and then you select it, boom, and all the settings are good to go. You don't have to mess with anything. Now, if you did want to tweak something, right below it, you have this pull-down menu. So you have your amp here, uh, and then you have, um, uh, okay, the amp is right here. So you can select from uh, your different bass amps from there, and it looks like, you know, I used an EQ on that and a chorus. You know, so you can go in there and select that stuff and tweak it if you like. So it looks like I don't have the chorus turned on there. I just have the EQ and the amp for that bass sound. Okay, so for the piano, um, I just, uh, I didn't go into any of my old uh, files. I just, uh, you know, selected uh, like a Rhodes piano and uh, electric piano and then... Um, yeah, see here, Sound Bank, Electric Piano Rhodes. And I think it came default with an, an EQ, I believe. And so then I uh, added the chorus. You know, uh, this originally it just showed the EQ, right? And then so I, there was like all these empty blocks below it. So, you know, for instance, whenever I did the chorus, I just did the little arrow thing here. And that brought that up, and then I think I went to, was that a digital chorus? Yeah, digital chorus. I went to uh, digital chorus, just like this, selected it, and then uh, I don't think I made any uh, setting adjustments. I just left the default setting. Um, notice that I've got an ambient block, but I don't have it turned on. So, like, I... At first, I'm like, do I want ambience or do I want reverb? And I'm like, well, let me try ambience. And I tried that. And then I said, well, let me try reverb. And I went with the concert reverb, as you can see here. And uh, again, how you would do that, like, you know, let's say that was blank and you wanted reverb. You just go here to the little up and down arrow. And there you go, reverb. And I went with concert reverb. And you just select that and... That's it. You know, when you select it, you can go in there and, you know, make adjustments with the uh, dry and the wet and the width and the depth and all that kind of stuff. But I just left it as default and did the same thing with the pad synthesizer. Uh, as you can see with the pad synthesizer, you just got a 10 band EQ. That was default already in there. And then I just added some theater reverb and um, the drum kit didn't do a thing to it that's just how it naturally sounds and then I panned the electric piano like uh, to uh, what 10 o'clock and the pad synthesizer to uh, 2 o'clock just to uh, open it up a little bit and so that is how how I did that that's how it was made 